A lot of questions have been asked of America with regards to the crisis that's unfolding in Afghanistan. And U.S. President Joe Biden has finally broken his silence. But he has defended his move, saying that he doesn't regret his decision to pull out troops from Afghanistan. Biden clarified that nation building was never the mission that U.S. had undertaken and that America only got involved in war in the first place to get to those who were responsible for 9-11. Speaking on the chaotic scenes that unfolded in Kabul, Biden said that the situation unraveled more quickly than the U.S. thought. Biden also took on the Afghanistan political and military heads for being unable to reach a consensus and emphasized that U.S. cannot win a war that's been lost by Afghan forces. He ended a statement saying that he won't pass the Afghanistan crisis to his successor. Vice President Kamala Harris has also reiterated what Biden has said, saying ending military involvement in Afghanistan is the right decision. It was this nightmare day in Afghanistan's capital. These hair-raising images of Kabul's total collapse. That forced the US president to break his silence. US President Joe Biden, who had been globally criticized for 48 hours, for seeming to abandon a country to its political doom. We don't deserve this! We don't deserve this! Today, addressed his nation and the world. Starting with an admission that America was shocked by the swiftness of the collapse. This did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. The developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. Biden then proceeded to assign blame for what has happened, pointing a finger directly at the Afghan forces and political leadership. We gave them every tool they could need. We paid their salaries, provided for the maintenance of their Air Force, we gave them every chance to determine their own future. What we could not provide them was the will to fight for that future. But if Afghanistan is unable to mount any real resistance to the Taliban now, there is no chance that one year, one more year, five more years, or 20 more years, the U.S. military boots on the ground would have made any difference. It is wrong to order American troops to step up when Afghanistan's own armed forces would not. When I spoke by phone to Ghani in July, we had very frank conversations. We talked about how Afghanistan should prepare to fight their civil wars after the U.S. military departed. This advice was flatly refused. Mr. Ghani insisted that the Afghan forces would fight. But obviously he was wrong. The U.S. president was on vacation while Afghanistan disintegrated into the hands of the Taliban. But the heat of the catastrophe clearly got too much. And Biden was forced to cut short his vacation and face up to the searing questions he now faces. Biden then went on to provide a detailed justification for the U.S. withdrawal. We went to Afghanistan almost 20 years ago with clear goals. Get those who attacked us on September 11, 2001. We did that. We severely degraded al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. We never gave up the hunt for Osama bin Laden and we got him. That was a decade ago. There would have been no ceasefire after May 1. 
There was no agreement protecting our forces after May 1. There was no status quo of stability without American casualties after May 1. There was only a cold reality of either following through on the agreement to withdraw our forces or escalating the conflict and sending thousands more American troops back into combat in Afghanistan. In what sounded like an admission after a clear failure to achieve its strategic objectives, Biden said. Our mission in Afghanistan was never supposed to have been nation building. Our only vital national interest in Afghanistan remains today what it has always been, preventing a terrorist attack on America's homeland. I've argued for many years that our mission should be narrowly focused on counterterrorism, not counterinsurgency or nation building. In an emotional appeal to the American people on the back of over 2,000 U.S. service personnel who have lost their lives in the two-decade mission in Afghanistan, the U.S. president appeared to speak directly to military families and the veteran community. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. How many more lives, American lives, is it worth? How many endless rows of headstones at Arlington National Cemetery? I'm clear on my answer. I will not repeat the mistakes we've made in the past. The United States has added over 1,000 troops to existing emergency forces in the country to safely extract U.S. nationals. An exercise that paints the Biden administration with the same brush that the Nixon White House was painted with during the humiliating withdrawal from Vietnam 46 years ago. But he insisted that his move was specifically to avoid a repeat of the Vietnam debacle. I made a commitment to the brave men and women who served this nation that I wasn't going to ask them to continue to risk their lives in a military action that should have ended long ago. Our leaders did that in Vietnam when I got here as a young man. I will not do it in Afghanistan. China and Russia would love nothing more than the United States to continue to funnel billions of dollars in resources and attention into stabilizing Afghanistan indefinitely. As the U.S. comes to terms with unfolding security situation, the days ahead will provide more answers perhaps than the U.S. President has just done. Bureau Report, India Today.